welcome back to our channel. For those of you that don't know me, I am Anne, one half of the Sussex Handmade Soap Company. My colleague Wayne is behind the scenes doing all of our uh, technical bits and bobs. And for today's video, we are going to be going back to one of my old favourites, lavender. We are going to be using a layering technique today, and it's a technique that I actually read about in this book, Pure Soap Making which is a fantastic book. I have loads of soap making books. My shelves are full of them, but that is one of my favorite ones. I would recommend getting it if you are interested in things like soap creating and designs and whatnot. So yeah, we've got the layering technique from that book. We've put our own spin on it with colors and scent and decoration and things like that. Um, we will be using two colors of soap in today's recipe. They will be the natural white color of the soap and then we shall be using some ultramarine violet powder to decorate, or colour rather, a second portion of the soap in a nice lavender purple colour. And we're going to be topping it off with some lavender flowers. And one of the reasons I love using lavender so much is that it is such a versatile essential oil. And it's also one of the safest essential oils as well. Because even though essential oils are natural, they do have safety concerns some of them um, just because something's natural doesn't automatically make it safe but yeah lavender is one of the safest it's one of the most versatile it can be used for treating numerous conditions both physical and mental such as stress <sighs> insomnia And even shock. <laughs> and also, in my opinion, it also smells really, really good, which is an absolute added bonus because those benefits are fantastic. But at the end of the day, we're making soap. We want it to smell good. So let's move swiftly on and I'll show you today's design. So we're beginning this soap much the same way as we begin many of our others. Our solid oils have been melted and combined with our liquid ones and now we're going to add in our cooled lye water. Then we're going to bring it to a light trace with the stick blender. And once we've got it to a light trace we're going to split it into two separate jugs with an equal portion in each. Whizzy, 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 whiz, whiz, whiz. Nearly forgot, before we split it up, we are going to add in the lavender essential oil. Get that combined. I absolutely adore the smell of lavender. I think lavender is a very much love it or hate it kind of essential oil. You either love the smell or you hate the smell. There doesn't seem to be any kind of in between with this one. But for me, I'm definitely coming down on the side of loving it. And we're going to split this up now into two jugs, as I said, with an equal portion of soap in each of them. Okay, so now we've separated the batter down into two jugs. We're going to take our colourant, which today is an ultramarine violet, and we are going to tip it into one of the jugs to colour it that nice purple calendar. Calendar? Calendar? Cal what am I trying to say? Colour. To colour it to that nice purple colour that is, you know, just always associated with lavender, that lovely purple. We're going to use a spatula to work it in. And we are still working at a light trace at the moment. And then what we're going to need to do is split them down further. So we're going to work with the white coloured one to begin with. And we're going to take one of these little jugs and put a third of the batter from in here into here. Then we're going to repeat and do exactly the same with the purple layer. So we've split off a third of each of those batters and now we're going to go back to the stick blender and use it to bring them to a medium trace and then we're going to get the mould ready and start the pouring. 
We're going to start with the white layer. So I'm just going to go in. Right, so we've got this to a medium slash thick trace now, which is perfect. I'm going to pull the mould in and show you how we're going to fill it up to do the layered technique. And now I've got my mould uh, finely placed. It was a little tricky trying to find a way where it would uh, sit nicely. We're going to take this white layer and gently pour it down the lower edge. And we have got very thick now actually, much thicker than I was anticipating. So I'll uh, try and level that out a little bit. <laughs> I think I whisked it too much. Never mind. <laughs> it can always be fixed, one way or another. Just a case of working out how to do the fixing. And in this instance, I think I'm going to do it with the spatula. I'm just going to take the spatula down and just manually sort of work it down by hand. Right, now we put this to one side and leave it to firm up a bit. Bring back in the purple and now we're going to do the same with the purple. Whiz it up and get it in the mould. So while I was doing the white line, the purple has actually really thickened up on its own and to be honest, I'm not sure this really needs blending, but I'm going to give it a quick blend just to hopefully get some of that ultramarine powder to blend in a bit better. That'll do. Seems a little thinner than the white, which is good. So back to the mould. And now what we need to do, hopefully this white layer has firmed up enough so that it's not going to move. We're going to switch the mould round so that our lower edge is now here. We're going to go to the purple and we're going to tip it in. Oh yeah, this is much better. This is the consistency we wanted. <laughs> because that white was so thick, it hasn't actually flowed down the way I was hoping it would. So we may have to use a spatula just to pull the purple across to meet the white so that there's no gaps. Side two done, back to the edge to uh, firm up a little. While that's firming up, I'm gonna measure out another two cups of the batters. Now hopefully that purple layer has set up as well and what we're going to do is take a, about a half quarter teaspoon of the oxide powder. We're going to put it through a sieve and make a very thin line. Just all over the soap. And I'm only putting a little on, it doesn't need to cover the whole thing, just some sort of line that hopefully will be evident in the finished bars. That'll do. Right, repeat the process.
now what we're going to do is texture the top. We're going to use the back of a spoon just to pull it into the centre. And I can smell that lavender. It smells so good. As I said earlier, I think people love it or hate it. I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, it just smells like, you know, older ladies is a comment we get fairly often. <laughs> But it doesn't remind me of that at all. It reminds me of summer. It reminds me of being outside and there being sun and warmth and, you know, lavender plants that you just have to brush past and you get that deep, beautiful smell. So just, yeah, sunny, beautiful days of being a child and it doesn't remind me of old people at all. Or maybe I'm just old before my time. Could be that. <laughs> Oh, caught some of that purple under there, but again, that's okay. It's just going to add to the effect of each bar. Each bar is going to be individual, each bar is going to be different. And hopefully each bar is going to be pretty as well. So yeah, pulling that up. And doing the same just here, getting it to a nice peak. And then of course, being a lavender bar, it really wouldn't be complete, would it? Without adding some lavender flowers on top. These lavender flowers are actually a pretty poor colour, in my opinion. Uh, we tend to grow our own lavender. Well, we do grow our own lavender, which we use in the soaps. But it's February at the moment. And all of our lavender that we grew last year, we have already used. So I had to buy this in. And it isn't the best lavender that I've seen. I say the colour's a little bit pale and there seems to be lots of stalky bits in. So I'm looking forward to when summer does rock round again and we can use our own homegrown lavender. Because it's always nicer using homegrown things whether or not they're better but in my opinion in this case our homegrown lavender is actually better in colour and in design. Colour and design, colour and scent and Sorry, I got thrown off a little bit there. The door's just opened. My daughter's just got home from school and I have lost my train of what I was saying. <laughs> but she's being good. She's being ever so quiet. Right. And I think this will do for this soap. We are going to leave it, I don't know, 24, 48 hours or so. Then we shall come back and chop it up and see how that inside swirl design looks or the layer technique, or whatever it is you want to call it. We'll come back and we'll see it soon. So we're back two days later. The soap is out of the mould and ready to be cut. Uh, to be honest, my first impressions of this one are that I'm not so sure that I actually like it. I think there's a couple of things that could have been done better. Um, the purple smearing here and the batter was quite thick so the sides haven't quite gone together as I was hoping they would. But I'm hoping that once I cut down through the bar that that is just on the ends and that the rest of it may be okay. But that's something we're only going to find out as we cut the bar. So I'm going to turn it on its side to avoid those lavender flowers dragging through the soap. And we're going to cut it up and see how it looks on the inside. So here we have the bars now that they've been cut. I'm going to take back a little bit of what I said before we uh, cut up the bar. I was worried they weren't going to work purely because the end piece is here, this one here and this other end here. The soap, because it was so thick, hadn't quite blended together and I was worried about whether it was going to go through the whole of the soap like that. But if I show you a couple of the inside pieces Let's take this one for example. You can see that it has all blended together and I think that's looking quite pretty. I'm quite pleased with that. 
The only thing is the powder line from where I have cut it with a knife has dragged through slightly, which is the only disappointing thing. Other than that, I think they look quite pretty. And just to show you, it wasn't just a one-off. <laughs> we have got another bar here showing that pretty little ultramarine powder line, the blending of the layers. And I think on the whole, that is a very pretty little bar of soap and I am much happier with it now that it's been cut and really looking forward to being able to use it. The lavender smell is just divine, unless you ask Wayne, in which case Wayne would probably say the lavender smell is utterly horrible. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a lavender fan. We are in different camps on that. But yeah, that is better than we were hoping for. And definitely a bar of soap that I would be happy to use, sell or give away. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been a bit of an interesting one to do. Um, if I'm being honest, it wasn't my absolute favourite in the sense that things went a little bit wrong. The batter thickened up, the powder line hasn't worked so well, but I am happy with the overall soap. It's turned out better than I actually thought it was gonna turn out, so that is an added bonus. And I just love lavender. I've said that so many times throughout this video. I love lavender. Right, I think in a few weeks time, we will probably come back and revisit this layering technique, maybe do another design that incorporates it. Because I feel like we're nearly there, but there is just a few things I'd like to improve on, like the thickness of the soap and the powder line going through the middle. So we will revisit, come back to that and do another soap with it in the future. But thank you for watching today's video. As always, we really do appreciate it if you give us a like or a subscribe, if you've enjoyed it, of course. And if you want to head on over to our website, you can do so. The address is here. We do a 20% discount code for anything you buy, which is here. And I'll see you next time. I've got to go and catch that soap. <laughs>